In this particular video, we are going to do a deep dive into light dependent reaction, which means to say, I'm going to give you a comprehensive explanation as to what is going on during this process. Now, just as a reminder, light dependent reaction has one purpose. It is to use light energy, whether from sunlight or artificial light, to get two products, ATP and also reduced NADP. So what exactly is NADP? NADP is a hydrogen carrier, and when the NADP receives hydrogen, it becomes reduced NADP. We've talked about this before. And of course, a very important thing to know here is ATP and reduced NADP are then later needed in light independent reaction. Okay, so long story short, the purpose of light dependent reaction right now is to get these two products first. Also, what we have to know is there are two types of light dependent reaction, non-cyclic photophosphorylation and cyclic photophosphorylation. Now, I know it seems a bit confusing, but let's break it down. When you see the word photo, which I've highlighted there, photo just means it has something to do with light. Phosphorylation in this context means that ADP plus phosphate will then produce a molecule known as ATP. So photophosphorylation just basically means using light energy to convert ADP and phosphate into ATP. Then comes the question, what exactly is that non-cyclic and cyclic part? That non-cyclic and cyclic is in relation to the movement of electrons during this process. You might be thinking, oh my god, why are there electrons here? Don't worry, we will talk about them. In the cyclic process, the movement of the electron is cyclical, which means to say the electron moves and then goes back to its original spot. But in non-cyclic, the movement of electron is linear, okay? And the purpose of non-cyclic photophosphorylation is to produce ATP and reduced NADP, but the purpose of cyclic photophosphorylation is only to produce extra ATP. What we do have to understand is, for both of them, the process happens in the thylakoid or the granium. We have talked about that earlier when we covered the structure of the chloroplasts. So without wasting time, let's immediately go into non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Remember, I told you that light-dependent reaction happens in the thylakoid or the granule. So what I'm drawing out here is a single thylakoid where it has its own membrane, the thylakoid membrane, it has the ATP synthase, electron transport chain, and also these very weird structures called photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. And as you can see over there, I'm just drawing out that very bl that blue color thing attached to photosystem 2 is called the oxygen evolving complex. We've seen that in the previous video. And next to photosystem 1, there's another enzyme. You don't actually have to know the existence of that particular enzyme, but I'm putting it over there. Now, I want you to just understand that the function of that particular enzyme is to produce reduced NADP. That's what it's supposed to do. So remember, because I told you that light-dependent reaction, we want to get reduced NADP. So as you can see here, there are some NADP floating outside the thylakoid, also known as that space, the stroma. And the NADPs are just floating around with some hydrogen ions. Do not concern yourself as to where the hydrogen ions come from. They are just floating around. They are just existing over there. So don't worry about it. Now, the enzyme wants to convert NADP into reduced NADP, but the problem here is as follows. It only has hydrogen ions and NADP. To convert it into reduced NADP, it requires an electron because, because that hydrogen ion needs to be converted into a hydrogen atom and it needs an electron. Don't memorize that, I just need you to know that it needs an electron. So where is that electron going to come from? Here's the interesting thing. Remember, I told you before, the structure of photosystems are as follows, where it has the accessory pigments and the reaction center, and when it absorbs light, there's a transfer of energy, and when it reaches the reaction center, it becomes photoactivated and it releases an electron, an excited electron. So, in this case over here, light will first hit photosystem 1, 
it causes the photo activation of that reaction center and an electron will be excited towards the enzyme as you can see the arrow there when that enzyme receives the electron guess what happens now reduced nadp can be produced simple as that that's basically it but remember, I told you before as well, I told you not to memorize this part, but I said that if a photosystem loses an electron, it needs to replace the electron that is lost. So you see, photosystem one has lost an electron, it needs to get an electron in return. Okay, so where does that new electron come from? You guessed it it will be given by photosystem 2. So light energy is also absorbed by photosystem 2. Photo activates the reaction center and the electron starts to jump along the electron transport chain and it moves to photosystem 1. So photosystem 1 lost an electron earlier but it has now gained an electron in return. So it has been replaced. But this is where it's very important to understand. The movement of the electron along the ETC is important. You have seen this before in the uh, electron transport chain when we were studying uh, respiration, uh, oxidative phosphorylation in, to be specific. And when the electron moves along the ETC, it powers the ETC. What does it mean by power the ETC? It pumps hydrogen ion against the concentration gradient. And when it pumps hydrogen ions against the concentration gradient, look here. The hydrogen ion enters the thylakoid space by crossing the membrane. What this does is this creates a proton gradient or hydrogen ion gradient where the inside of the thylakoid has a higher hydrogen ion or proton gradient and the outside of the thylakoid has a lower hydrogen ion or proton gradient. What happens then? The hydrogen ion diffuses through the ATP synthase through a process known as chemiosmosis. And why is this significant? Because this will power the ATP synthase and it will take in a ADP and phosphate and convert it into ATP. This is not respiration. This is using light energy to convert ADP and phosphate to produce ATP. So this is called photophosphorylation. But we have another problem. Photosystem 2 has lost its electron because that electron was used to replace the electron in photosystem 1. So photosystem 2 now is lacking one electron and it has to be replaced. Where is that new electron going to come from? Now, if you remember, I told you before in the light-dependent reaction that a very important process also happens called the photolysis of water, where water absorbs light and it's broken down into hydrogen ions, electrons, and oxygen, the waste product. And I told you that this process is important, and now we are going to see why that process is actually important. Another thing I also told you was that photosystem 2 has an enzyme attached to it called the oxygen evolving complex. So what actually happens here is the water, which I've represented in that slice of pie over there, it will attach to the active site of that oxygen evolving complex and it also absorbs light. And that's when the water is broken down into two hydrogen ions plus two electrons plus half oxygen molecule. Uh, the reason why I'm writing it as two, two and half is because I'm just trying to balance the chemical equation. That's all. Okay, so to simplify this, what actually happens is light will, if I were to just separate it because it looks a bit confusing, water will absorb light and with the assistance of oxygen evolving complex, the water is broken down. Water doesn't break down spontaneously under light, by the way. If you had a glass of water and you put it under sunlight, will the water break down into oxygen? No, it needs the help of the oxygen evolving complex. And in this case, it's broken down into hydrogen ions, electrons, and oxygen. And why is it important that this process happens? Because that electron that was produced will enter photosystem 2. So photosystem 2 earlier lost its electron. Now it has gained back its electron. That's basically what happens. And as you can see over here, the movement of the electrons, which I've represented in the pink arrows, is that pink? Yeah, I think that's pink. 
that is definitely pink okay uh the movement of the electrons are not cyclical they are moving in a linear manner that's why it's called non-cyclic because the movement of the electrons are linear and it's also called photophosphorylation because the light energy is used to join adp and phosphate together to make atp this diagram definitely looks confusing. I'm not going to sit here and say that it's not confusing at all. So for the purpose of your exam, what you should know is there are four parts that are involved in non-cyclic photophosphorylation. The water, photosystem 2, photosystem 1 and the enzymes. When light hits photosystem 1, electrons are excited out to the enzyme and this helps in the production of reduced NADP. When light hits photosystem 2, the electron from photosystem 2 moves to photosystem 1, but because it moves to photosystem 1, it creates a proton gradient between the thylakoid and the stroma and cause chemiosmosis. Therefore, the movement of electron from photosystem 2 to photosystem 1 helps in the production of ATP. That is important. You must know that part. So it is important for you to mention in the exam that when the electrons move from photosystem 2 to photosystem 1, ATP will be produced. And last but not least, water is also absorbing light where photolysis of water happens. And when the water is broken down, it produces oxygen, waste product. We don't care about that. But the electron that is also produced will move to photosystem too. So as you can see, this is how we summarize the movement of electrons in this case for non-cyclic photophosphorylation. However, for cyclic photophosphorylation, remember... Photophosphorylation basically means to produce ATP using light and the movement of the electron is cyclical, which means to say it moves in a kind of loop. So its beginning and ending spot will be the same. The purpose of cyclic photophosphorylation is only to produce extra ATP. It does not produce the reduced NADP. So let's see how that happens. In this case over here, so you can see some NADPs and some hydrogen ions floating around. You can see the photosystem 2, photosystem 1, and some water there. Now, light in this case will hit photosystem 1. But instead of the electron moving towards the right, where it has to go to the enzyme, look at what happens to the electron. The electron moves over to the left, and it moves to the electron transport chain where it's trying to reach the photosystem 2, but it doesn't have enough energy to reach photosystem 2. So what happens then is, basically, it just moves back to photosystem 1. Okay, so the electron gets excited out of photosystem 1. Yes, it moves along the ETC, but just like a slide, it's going up the slide. It doesn't have enough energy to reach the top of the slide, so it just well, slides back down to photosystem 1. So you might be thinking, this electron is stupid because it barely did anything, right? Because it just went out and it went back to its home. But this is important because it still managed to power the electron transport chain. And when it powers the electron transport chain, hydrogen ions are pumped against the concentration gradient into the thylakoid space creates a proton gradient or a hydrogen ion gradient between the thylakoid and the stroma and therefore hydrogen ions will diffuse through the ATP synthase causing chemiosmosis to happen and in this situation over here ATP is produced. But as you can see over here, Photosystem 1 lost its electron but it gained back the same electron so it doesn't have to replace it right? Because it technically did not lose an electron at all. The important thing to understand over here is um, photosystem 2 is not involved, that particular enzyme is not involved, and water does not undergo photolysis. So to summarize, as you can see here, light is absorbed by photosystem 1, causing the photoactivation of the reaction center, and electrons are then excited out of photosystem 1, then it returns back to photosystem 1, but this powers the ETC and ATP synthase causing ATP production. That's what we have to understand about cyclic photophosphorylation. 
So the summary of light dependent reaction is as follows. Light dependent reaction is split into two major processes, non-cyclic photophosphorylation and cyclic photophosphorylation. Both of them happen in the thylakoid or granume. It's up to you to uh, it's up to you to mention what whichever structure it uses photosystem 1 and in both cases they produce ATP. But Non-cyclic photophosphorylation uses photosystem 2. It produces reduced NADP and photolysis of water occurs to produce oxygen. However, for cyclic, neither the ones in blue do not happen. It does not use photosystem 2. It does not produce reduced NADP and photolysis of water does not happen in this case. So these are the differences between cyclic photophosphorylation and non-cyclic photophosphorylation, which are part of the light-dependent reaction.